Are you interested in creating a purpose-built rental property? Perhaps taking a single family dwelling, tearing it down to the ground and rebuilding a boutique apartment building? Well, if the answer to that is yes, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video and this series of videos I'm putting together on our Glen Lake project, where we're gonna take this single family dwelling, tear it down to the ground and rebuild it as a purpose-built 10 unit apartment building. Hey, what's up? Darren Burrows here. My mission is to help alleviate the housing crisis by creating more rental units through real estate development. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. To bring you up to speed, we purchased this property a couple of years ago, and we've been going through the site plan approval process. For those of you not familiar with what site plan approval is or when you have to do it, it used to be that if you were creating a building with anything more than four units, you had to go through the site plan approval process, but that has recently changed. But now because the government of Ontario just introduced Bill 23, otherwise known as the More Homes Built Faster Act, anything under 10 units now is exempt from site plan approval. Bill 23 was passed in December of 2022, and it's really revolutionized development for real estate investors. Some of the major changes that you wanna be aware of is that any lot in Ontario is now going to be legally zoned for anything up to a triplex. They've also reduced the need to go to site plan approval for any projects that are under 10 units. They're also reducing development charges for purpose-built rentals, and you may be exempt from development charges if you're doing affordable housing. So let me break that down for this project, because on this project, we actually had to go through site plan approval because Bill 23 hadn't been passed yet, which meant that we spent over a year working with the City of Toronto trying to get this project approved. They were asking for various studies, for traffic, for light, for shadow, for anything that you could think of. And that takes time and money to gather up all of those studies and produce that for the city of Toronto. And all of these studies range in price. Some start as little as $500 and others can go up to as high as $25 or $30,000 for an engineer's report for what the city is looking to find out about the potential project. And after going back and forth with the city for almost a year, figuring out what they wanted on this piece of property and what we wanted as investors, we finally almost came to an agreement on what this project might look like. We were just about to submit our second revision to the site plan approval, and then Bill 23 got passed. And with that, we got a phone call from the city of Toronto saying that because our project was under 10 units, it was basically exempt from going through site plan approval, and we were able to go straight to building permit. Now in our original plan, we were looking at eight units in this building, two in the basement, main floor, second floor, and third floor. But because they made the rule change around Bill 23, we decided to look at if we could create two additional units in this building to bring it up to 10 units. The challenge with that is we'd already gone through what's called committee of adjustments, and we had some minor variances that were already approved for this building. To go back through that process would take months and months of time, and there's no guarantee that we would get those things approved second time around. But while we were going through the approval process, something else changed. The City of Toronto introduced a new bylaw, basically eliminating all parking requirements for new developments. So now with those parking requirements relaxed, we were able to actually increase the number of units in this building from eight to 10 without any further minor variances. This is a huge bonus for this project because it gives us another two units, which will significantly increase the value of this property. So now the unit layout will be four micro units in the basement, two on the main floor, two on the second floor, and two on the third floor, giving us a total of 10 units in this building. So after almost two years of going through the approvals process, we've just submitted for our building permits, and we hope to be under construction in the next couple of months. Now, one of the challenging things with a property like this is you don't want it sitting dormant for very long and not generating revenue. So we've actually been renting this property out for the last two years, and it's been bringing in some income. One of the most important things when you're putting a tenant into a property that you know you're gonna be tearing down is that they understand that this is a limited rental engagement. So when we were choosing tenants for this property, we were looking for someone who was looking for a short-term situation. And even if that's three or six months and they leave early and the building sits vacant for a couple months, we'd rather that than being ready for construction and having to try to figure out how to get a tenant out of a building. So recently the tenant moved out and I have to say that they've left it in pretty bad condition, but because we're tearing the property down, I wasn't so concerned about the state of the property. Having said that, I do need to still come over and check on it on a regular basis to make sure that our insurance is still intact 
And once we start getting ready to demolish the building, we'll have to fence the area and get it all prepped for tearing the building down. While we're working on getting our building permits, we're also getting finalized for our construction financing. For this project, we'll be using CMHC's MLI Select program, which allows us to get construction financing. And then when the construction period is done, we'll roll over to term financing for the remainder of the buy and hold of this rental property. If you're not familiar with what MLI Select program is, and you've got a building that has six units or more, you're gonna to wanna to check out that program. I'll leave a link in the description below for more information on MLI Select financing through CMHC. Now let me walk you around the property and show you what this thing looks like before we tear it down. To stay up to date on this project and any of our other projects, consider hitting that subscribe button and also the notification bell. If you're interested in taking on a development like this of your own, consider checking out my development course at darrenvoros.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.